Welcome back to the next video, everybody. Today, we are going to look at some of the key players in the history and in the proof of Fermat's last theorem. This will be a quick one today. So key players in the flow of the proof. I would say that we've got five of them. So first, we have Gerhard Frey in 1985. Shows that the existence of a non-trivial integer solution to the Fermat equation of prime exponent p at least five, which, as you recall from the last couple of videos, is all that's left to prove. Existence of such a solution would imply the existence of a very strange semi-stable elliptic curve, the Fry curve, we call it, which would likely contradict the taniyama shimura vey conjecture due to its strange properties. All of this will be explained in upcoming videos. J.P. Serre, Jean-Pierre Serre in 1985, proposes the Serre conjectures, which we will talk about at length. In fact, once I get done uploading these early videos, I'm going to be jumping back into some newer content. We're going to be talking a lot about the Serre conjectures. So he showed that a special case of the Serre conjecture is called the Epsilon conjecture, when combined with the semi-stable taniyama shimura vey conjecture, implies Fermat's last theorem. Okay. So the epsilon conjecture is now called Ribbit's level lowering theorem because in 1986, Ribbit proves the epsilon conjecture, making it a theorem. And again, that's called the level lowering theorem. Then fast forward a little bit, almost 10 years later, Richard Taylor and Andrew Wiles actually prove Taniyama Shimura Vey for semi-stable elliptic curves. So what actually happens is in 93, Wiles announces a proof by himself, shocks the world, he says he proves Taniyama Shimura Vey for all semi-stable elliptic curves E over Q. People find a mistake in the proof. And then Wiles joins with, with his at the time PhD student, Richard Taylor, to in 1994, help fix the initial proof of semi-stable Taniyama Shimura Vey or the modularity theorem, if you like. Uh, Richard Taylor actually contributes more here though. He later joins with Bro, Conrad and Diamond so the famous BCDT paper, to prove the full taniyama shimura Bay conjecture, now known as the modularity theorem, without the requirement that the elliptic curves in question be semi-stable. Okay, so now let's look at some of the key players uh, who maybe were instrumental, not necessarily in the direct flow of the proof, although some of them were, but who proved various crucial theorems needed for the proof of Fermat's last theorem and developed a lot of crucial theory needed throughout the proof. So first we have Barry Mazur, his deformation theory of Galois representations will play a huge central role in Wiles' proof, as we'll see. Mazur also plays a crucial part in the proof of Ribbit's theorem. And then we also use Mazur's torsion theorem and or his isogeny theorem for elliptic curves at one critical juncture in the proof of Fermat's last theorem. Then we have Henri Cariol. We're gonna use Cariol's work on Hilbert modular forms repeatedly. So his pivotal work on understanding the local nature of Galois representations attached to cusp forms is used several times throughout the proof of Fermat's last theorem. I'm gonna be calling the theorem that I'm talking about Cariol's hard theorem throughout this series of talks. We're also gonna use his results on conductors of representations, okay? Then we have John Tate. You can't you know, talk about elliptic curves without talking about John Tate. So we're gonna use his p-adic uniformization. We're gonna use his work on p-divisible groups. We'll use his foundational theorems on elliptic curves and his duality results from the theory of Galois cohomology. So Tate is all over the place. Even his results on finite flat group schemes, John Tate is everywhere, okay? There's Robert Langlands. So the proof of Fermat's last theorem uses his uh, theorem with tunnel on the modularity of mod three representations attached to elliptic curves. And then we'll also, well, we won't really explicitly do this, but lurking in the background, the Jacques A. Langlands correspondence is used. Okay. Then we have Jean-Marc Fontaine. So in order to compute sizes of certain Galois cohomology groups, we're going to rely on Fontaine's categorical equivalence between a, cer a certain category of special modules and a certain category of, of special group schemes. Then we have Ramakrishna. So in his thesis, he uses Fontaine's work here to prove the representability of what we call the flat deformation problem or the flat deformation functor. And then there's scared faultings. So faultings is best known for proving Mordell's conjecture and we will use his finiteness theorems at a couple different points in the proof of Fermat's last theorem. So there are, look, not only are there another dozen or two dozen people that probably could easily be on this list, but even the accomplishments I listed here for each person on this list go far beyond what's in this talk. So you should dig in a little more to each one of these people and you'll find a treasure trove of information. All right. So I will see you all next video on Monday.
where we'll start talking about the basic theory of elliptic curves. So I'll see you then and thanks for watching.